Boogie Lou Carbon Barker, it's yet another episode of Wrestleroni. I'm excited. You should be excited. Are you familiar with what's going on in Argentina? I am. It's wild. It's wild down there, and I got the perfect man to tell you all about it. Pro wrestler, historian even, out of Argentina. Welcome to the show. Kuma, how you doing, my man? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I don't know if I reached the level of historian, but I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good writer. <laughs> so I try to do that to support the local scene. To, to us here in America and West Virginia that don't know about Argentina right now, you are our teacher, our historian, our very special guest, because y'all's killing it. You guys are killing it. How was 2022 for Argentina wrestling? 2022 was a big year. We have been going from uh, from before the lockdowns. The thing was uh, it wasn't big. We have like a couple of shows each per year. Uh, um, but after the COVID, after the lockdowns, we the, the whole thing exploded. Everyone wanted to make shows. Everyone wanted to wrestle. So we started having a lot of shows from a lot of different uh, companies. Good. Mainly the, the, the biggest companies in the indie scene are Catch Argentino, mm-hmm. Duelo de Leyendas, and Legion Nueva Era. Each one has their own flavors, and from time to time they are a little bit of crossover between each other, mostly between Catch Argentino and Legion. Mm-hmm. But there are other companies like Super Estrella de la Lucha that made a pretty decent uh, weekly YouTube show which uh, matches and storylines cool. and the, we also have the, the, the debut of a new a new uh, company called uh, Argentina Selection Wrestling mm-hmm. but they haven't done a lot yet they have a really nice training place and they are uh, building up some steam to start this year uh, a little bit better than before. We had uh, around, I I, did, I, am, I don't have ex- the exact number, but we had over 20 shows in Argentina. That is, that is pretty, pretty, pretty impressive for uh, for this circuit that years ago, like five years ago, was housed and really? barely working. But right now we have like more than 20 shows from small indies. I'm not counting other companies that had a little bit more presence before. Uh, if I count those, we will go to over 30. Awesome. Awesome. And now you got a new company popping up that sounds like, like you said, they're gaining some steam. So we can look yeah, at Yeah, the, 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 the new the, the ACW is a translation wrestling. ASW is starting to build up. But the, the new kid on the block. That is going to start this year. It's a company that re- that just recently g- gave an announcement about their uh, uh, their foundation. Call it Quilombo. Quilombo is a word in Spanish, uh, usually in Argentina, uh, to re- uh, talking about something that is a messy situation or a really um, problematic situation in the sense of uh, like a b- very noisy, very on your face. Okay. And if, uh, Quilombo, m- many people are talking around the scene, considering who is involved and who will be behind it. And most fingers point toward Chile. Okay. Chile has a lot of uh, a much bigger independent scene. And seemingly they started looking over the border to Argentina and to see all the talent we have here. And maybe that's uh, what they are doing. Quilombo might be a... Uh, a new branch of a Chilean uh, company, but awesome. operating in Argentina. How cool is that? We're going to, well, well, sorry, we're going to have to wait to March uh, to find out what the, what is exactly the deal because they are going to have their big debut show in March. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's right around the corner, and that's pretty. Uh... Pretty big news down your way, from what I hear. That's uh, the big story right now. That's your Vince McMahon story. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get started on that. We're talking about the positives. We're talking about Argentina, the good stuff. I became 
one hell of a fan of J Master this year. Dude destroyed it. Yeah, J Master has a killer year. Even if he lost his title, he had every every single show he was in, he gave one of the best fights in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, he teaming up with CLS, one of the biggest heel tales, also helped him to get his status a little bit even higher in even without the belt because he's got involved in a lot of big fights and big shows mm -hmm. uh, and he's really young to the point that I, I'm, I, I'm a little bit envious he's so young and so talented he has a lot of, a lot of career in front of him mm -hmm. but J Master yes has a, had a banging year for sure for sure how was Kuma's year Oh my ear! I got beat the crap out of me by my <laughs> by my underling. Yeah, I, I I was I was fucking and uh, no, November was a bad month for, bad month for me. <laughs> I, I lost a rumble and then I got beaten up by my by my my stable comp my stable mates oh. and by this whole staff of Legion. They beat me bloody. I left limping. A broken man. <laughs> oh damn! So are are you kicked out of the stables then, or it was just they just wanted to teach you a lesson? How's that work? No, they they. they I think that I think they they quit and they under <laughs> they quit and they beat the crap out of me on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like you hanging around with those fellas anyway. It doesn't sound like nice fellas to me if they're going to do that to Kuma. Well, they, they, I kind of had it coming. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I kind of mistreated my boys, oh. and they decided to, well, enough is enough. And I got my ass beaten. Well, okay, <laughs> but was it just in the rumble where it's everyone for themselves, or had you been, kind of been a, been a prick of late? Oh, no, a huge prick. Like, okay. <laughs> World class. Months, months, months and months of being the biggest prick in the Hyun. I, I deserve that the beating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had it coming. I, it's just hard for me to see you being a prick. I want to see the tape. I want to see the footage of Kuma being a prick. I got to see this now. And I want to see the ass whooping us too. I, ass whooping as well if you had it coming to you. So hopefully you learned your lesson <laughs> and you do just do better this year, Kuma. Try to be a better man. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Making no promises. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Well, besides, uh, well, who was your stable mates that whooped your ass? No, they are not. They, 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 they were more like uh, my henchmen rather than stable mates. Oh, okay. They are the, 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 I, I call them. The, they were the two chefs, two chefs one and two chefs two. Okay. Uh, like cooking assistants. Uh, they, they got they. So just, they beat me the crap out. They were bad. They, they, were, they, they are important in the big, big scheme of things now. But who, was, who had a really good year was Chuck Dixon. Okay. From the Steel Nemesis. Dixon had a incredible year. Uh, he, he's already he's like the best high fly in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Nobody can discuss if he isn't. He, if you search high fly on the dictionary, you will find his face. Because that's that's how good he is, and he went two times to Chile, had two really great tours in Chile. Mm -hmm. He killed it by uh, over there. Uh, he had every match he had in the year was amazing, one of the best match on any card he was. Yep. And um, he he ended the year uh, being kicked out of his own stable because oh, really? he was yeah. a little bit more involved. Yeah, he was a little bit more involved with. Him being the champion, like having like a strong stable, mm -hmm. uh, they kick, kick him out, and he's going to be on his own for a while. But he had like a, like I say, a big year. He went here and went, was part of a big show that was done um, a, a little bit for the nostalgics. Mm -hmm. uh, last time I came, I mentioned one of the TV shows in Argentina. One of the big ones uh, about wrestling was mm -hmm. uh, one. It was cien uh, percent lucha, one hundred percent wrestling. Uh -huh. uh, a couple of members of that show have been active since that show ended, and they made a special show with the original com uh, original commentary team, 
an oh. additional uh, conductor for a big convention in Argentina, a gaming convention. And Dixon was one of the really few uh, young stars that was picked pick up to participate. And he fought two of the biggest stars in wrestling in the last 20 years. Awesome. He had like a amazing, okay. amazing year. Apart from the, the his, his stable ending, he had like a big year. He went everywhere. Somebody else who went to Chile with him was Frankie Legrand, another big big name in Argentina in the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, Frankie is like really popular, really charismatic. He's uh, the leader of uh, another stable that is called Colorado. He's the biggest freight stable in Argentina. Everyone loves them. Is uh, him, Frankie, Theo Griffin, that also had an incredible year and he's an incredible wrestler. Mm -hmm. And Cassidy, who is another, another one in the contention for best high five in Argentina. I, I, Frankie him. went to Chile. Frankie won the, the, the Royal Rumble in the Hyun. Mm -hmm. And he's, uh, he has a, a, shot to, for, to, uh, a shot for the championship belt. Okay. And he is, as always, one of the best promos in Argentina. If you search for best promos in Argentina, you have Frankie. Okay. Amazing promos, amazing. Uh, in, Frankie has an intensity that others don't have. Okay. And I know I saw a lot of good stuff from him this year. You mentioned Chuck Dixon. Chuck Dixon, uh, to me, high flyer and has those Kurt Angle skills. I don't know why he reminds me so much of Kurt Angle, but he does. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'll check the other cats you mentioned. Sounds like you guys... Doing a, when you're crossing over into Chile, Chile has a huge scene. So, good, good. As far as uh, television, has there been any change as far as television coming in from uh, the U.S., WWE, AEW? Has there been any, any other influence on television on the wrestling scene? No. The, the people who watch wrestling usually try to watch it, uh, watch it online or watch it through a couple of cable, of cable stations, cable networks that have uh, AW and WWE. Mm -hmm. Local, locally, there is no show at all. There have been a lot of uh, movement on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, also, Catch Argentino started doing uh, live streams in, on each of their shows. Awesome. They did a couple, a couple of those, a couple more than a couple of their shows on live stream. They had a couple of great matches, a couple of like pretty bloody dead matches. With burn, with burning tables and and very daring and dark devil stuff jumping from very tall things. Not not exactly my cup of tea, but a lot of people love that. Of course, yeah, you gotta have something for everybody, and that's what I do like that about the scene, because uh, you do have your hardcore craziness, but of course you do have the lucha style, all kinds of different styles represented. So there's nothing wrong with that. You gotta. If, Got so many wrestling fans. Some of them's gonna like the deathmatch stuff. So, fair enough. Fair one, enough. Of the, one of one of the biggest like attraction match attraction match we had in Argentina this year was in Le, in Legion uh, during uh, the Halloween show. There was a fatal four way, a, a fully international fatal four way. We got a wrestler from Argentina, a wrestler from the USA, a wrestler from uh, Chile. One Mexican wrestler, and even the uh, the referee was from Peru. Hell the yeah! Fully international. Uh, the wrestler that came from the United States was uh, Ariel Van Gogh, also known as Senshi. Okay. Amazing high flyer. Like he was, he's doing like, a lot of tours through uh, Latin America, getting to know the scene here. He was he fought in Legion, and he also participated on a show in Catch Argentino. He faced there uh, Jay Master and a couple more guys. Okay. And the, the match he had in Legion was a, a spot fest of the highest variety. It was <laughs> incredible. A lot of high-flying stuff. Theo Griffin, who was the brother from Argentina, did his amazing spears and the best German suplex in the whole circuit, because he has it. Uh, we other uh, another important match with uh, another important guest we had in Argentina was a former member of this uh, of the roster of Cien Percent Lucha, who currently is working on Mexico as a wrestler, uh, Hip Hop Band. He has his uh, 
Yes. Like 20 years of career. He's a fucking amazing guy. Hey, I know hip hop, uh, man. I, 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 even know. I even know. So, yeah, tell me about this. I, now you got me perked up. I know hip hop, man. I follow his stuff. Yeah, how'd that go? No, he came to Argentina and did a huge tour around all the indie circuit. He fought in Duelo de Leyendas, in Legion, in Catch. He went to the promotion of his. Of his father, of his father, uh, Demetrio, who is also a great wrestler. He's one of my tra my original trainers, Demetrio. Okay. And in Legion, he had a great match with Guido, uh, Michael, and uh, Terry from Nemesis. Okay. Are are some of those matches available to watch on YouTube? Yeah, well, the, all the matches are most of the matches are available on YouTube. The, Le the Le uh, Legion one is inside a Dosho a Dosho three event. You can find it on. Uh, Legion is the the whole the whole show that is pretty good, okay. and the uh, individual matches one uh, are split apart. Okay. Uh, talking about uh, Michael, Michael is a really important uh, piece right now in the local scene because he lost his belt. He was he started the year being the champion of Legion, mm -hmm. had a, gr a great bunch of defenses, and he lost his belt around mid year. He lost his belt to Ricky Roca, one of the big heels in the scene. Mm -hmm. And Michael went in, his character shifted and he went into, into a depression. And everyone loves the press Michael. Okay. They love him. They, they all, all, of the, all, all the, the, the audience want to see him happy again and fighting again. And he's really, really depressed. And it's almost a little bit sad to see. But he's, yeah. he really sells it. He's the last he's, he's time one of the, I talked to you, I know he was in the middle of his downfall. Are you telling me this dude still ain't bounced back? He's still taking an ass whoop? No. Oh, no, but he, he's starting to get uh, a little bit better because he, he is teaming up with one of the one of the very of the young talent that really lasted off the year. We had a couple, uh, a handful of talent that started this year to be like really important. Mm -hmm. uh, he's teaming right now with Gene Giovanna, okay, who is one, one of the students of the Dojo of Legion. Okay, uh, Giovanna had also a couple of incredible matches this year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he had a, 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 a team, uh, this uh, detective match with Michael against uh, the current champion CS. That was a, uh, it was hard to watch at points. They they hit each other with such <laughs> oh they, they, they I I was like uh, buying something like 40, 50 meters away from the ring and I could hear the the kicks like I I was at ring style. Okay. It was hard to watch. But the other big match he had was against uh, Ricky Roca, the champion. Mm -hmm. uh, Ricky Roca defended his belt against Jim Giovanna, and Giovanna had the whole audience behind him. He showed a lot of baby face fire. Nice. Nice. The other, the other uh, new talent that is really flourishing uh, from the Hion is Matt Demul. Uh, Matt Demul started like uh, he's a really good wrestler. But he uh, got a little bit. He got a little bit more of the audience, a little bit more of a character when he joined another group of uh, students from the dojo, and they formed their own stable that is called uh, La Nueva Degeneración, the New Degeneration. Okay. And Matt Mull had a lot uh, fought with Michael for the belt. Mm -hmm. uh, he also fought for the tight pack belt with his team mm -hmm. with a new Alain Celeste. Celeste had a perfect year. They had the belts. Mm -hmm. They had, they got the belts from Conorbardo at mid year, but they never lost. Okay. Celeste, uh, Pandemia and Exodus, Pandemia former former champion from Legion. Uh -huh. He they are a, a they are like a, a road runner of pain. I know it because I I had to wrestle them. Oh. And <laughs> it wasn't pretty. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. They are really, really good at what they do. I'm a big Pandemia fan. I've seen what Pandemia can do, so I'm, I'm sorry yeah, to hear Pandemia, that. Pandemia, has, if you have to watch one Pandemia match this year, you should watch the Tag Team Championship defense he had alongside Exodus against Killer, uh, or Russian-Mexican luchador de Legion, mm -hmm. and Valentino. Okay. Because it was 
amazing. Yeah. They 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 perform some incredible uh, incredible team up moves. It was really great. But every defense Celes had was great. Um, even the the last one he had, they had was the Michael and Jim Giovanna. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. Awesome, awesome. Now the the match that I should watch if I watch any. What promotion was that from? It depends on what what you want to watch. If you want like a big group match, uh, you should uh, track down Jay Master versus Wildcard Mike Brooks on Catch Argentino because they had a big rivalry through all the year. Mm -hmm. They even had uh, one. Of, this is something that. I don't think it ever happened in Argentina before in the Indy circuit. We had a uh, home invasion promos from oh, both okay. of them. Mm -hmm. That was they, they really escalated their conflict. Uh, they I think they had um I have they had a dog collar match. Okay. We, they were ch chained to each other. It was pretty great. If you're looking like for insanity for pure pure, pure spot fest. You should uh, track down the, the when it comes out because it hasn't come it, it hasn't come out yet. Uh, the last the main event from the November show of Legion that is uh, Legion versus Catch Argentino. Okay. Five five members of Legion versus five members of Catch Argentino. Oh, okay. It was a promotional stuff. Amazing, amazing, amazing spot fest. Okay. They everything they could have done, they did it. If you want like more uh, more technical a more technical matchup, uh, Ricky Roca is your guy. His defense he always showcases a lot of technical proficiency. Okay. Uh, there was also another event. I don't know if you can get it on YouTube, but from Super Estrellas de la Lucha, their champion that was champion through all the pandemic and before, uh, Maxi Lucero, finally lost his belt. Against another uh, new, a new wrestler that is called Adriel. Adriel is the current uh, Super Estrellas de la Lucha uh, champion, and they have they have a pretty good match. I, I live from what I have heard. I haven't watched it myself because I haven't found it. I will That's find it soon, there. sooner or later. But apart from that, there is a lot of great matches in all the companies uh, to check and. Each company is evolving and improving with the past of the year. We had uh, Legion, uh, had there are big, even bigger shows than before. They climbed from having 150 in the audience to having 200 to 250. Nice. And Catch Argentina found a new training, a new training facility. Duelo Legenda got a, a little bit bigger and got more people uh, to their shows. Uh, Super Estrella de la Lucha did their uh, YouTube show, mm -hmm. uh, and ACW had a show. Then another, uh, some other uh, promotions like uh, Siempre Lucha, that is composed more, more uh, mostly by uh, veterans, also have their own tour. Mm -hmm. uh, la Masa, who is another ex 100% Lucha, has his own promotion, and he had a, a series of matches against, uh, he was like the big heel in 100% Lucha. And he recruited the big face, uh, Vicente Viloni, mm -hmm. and they had a series of matches across Argentina, across the, uh, the suburban areas, getting a lot of uh, attention because they were two big stars from Simple Santa Lucha. I see. Okay. And, uh, you know, 250, as far as the crowd, that's nothing to sneeze at. That's awesome. Big props on that. That's a good crowd. That's making money right there. As far as Argentina wrestling and all of its years, you f I figure you're the man to ask, what's the biggest crowd we've had for any pro wrestling show in Argentina? No. Uh, the current indie scene mm -hmm. is small potatoes compared to the team shows, uh, to the two big golden ages of Argentina wrestling. The time in the 60s, 70s, we, we had Titanes and Ring, and the dancing ring, fill it, uh, they could fill uh, whole theaters. Like, for example, when WWE came to Argentina, they went to uh, um, a theater called the Luna Park. Okay. And they more or less fill it. The dancing ring had full house of the Luna Park, four shows, five shows, six shows in a row. Okay. 
it was like uh, insane. And 100% de lucha was more or less like that. They could fill big venues. Right. The indie circuit in Argentina is not at big venues. So right. we are at small to medium at best. Right. Like Legion has been slowly, really slowly increasing the audience through two years of getting uh, getting people involved and getting people getting people to know about Argentina wrestling currently because a lot of people in Argentina don't know we have an indie scene. Exactly. Exactly. You and they to... find out they, they, they find out and they go, oh wow, there is this and they come to see and they go, oh wow, this is great. And sooner or later we start having we had a couple of issues in uh, some of the shows in one of the smaller venues when we couldn't get enough people in. We had to kick some people out because we couldn't pack more people in. Oh, okay. Uh, especially this was they were really noticeable in the 18th show in the in the Hion, and back to the Mandrilis College in YouTube that you can see that the crowd is there is so many people you the the roster can barely move around the ring. And that's awesome because from to, from our prior conversation, the way that I on the outside looking in, the way I look at it, you guys had this huge TV show in the 70s. So of course you're in all these homes on television, and people's going to come out and see that. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it was the 80s or 90s. The TV show's not on television anymore. So and it no, doesn't. We, 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 there were like a couple of shows, but a little bit less popular in the 80s and the 90s than the 60s and 70s. And then we had another big show in the 2000s. Okay. And that, yes, and I was going, I remembered you saying that. So the way I kind of look at it, you guys kind of lost a whole generation of wrestling fans for a minute. So it's up to this indie scene, since there's no television, it's up to this indie scene to spread word of mouth because you don't have that prior generation of dads taking their sons to matches or am i wrong no you, you are totally right i made a, a for another article i have been working on mm -hmm. i write articles about uh, uh, the local scene that like i mentioned before they currently i i recently put a, a wrestle map uh, uh, an article about a very talented young uh, young wrestler that you had to watch in argentina that, like I mentioned a couple here, like Chuck Dixon, um, Theo Griffin, Frankie, and Jay Master. Uh, but I, did, I was working on another article, and I did a survey uh, uh, to as many wrestlers as I could in Argentina, asking them about their favorite wrestlers uh, from the from 2022, the, who was the revelation wrestler, the, the new blood. And then I asked a little bit more uh, about the the status of the industry uh, and the, the scene and how they saw the scene. I asked them what was missing to improve the, the indie circuit in Argentina. Mm -hmm. Most of them mentioned money, inversion, production, uh, and all, other people uh, mentioned the, that, that there is a little bit of uh, competition among different uh, groups, different companies, and they don't collaborate as much as they should. Because okay. if we collaborate with a lot more like a, a whole, yep. we could be a lot better than we are right now. Mm -hmm. And then I guess the, a lot of them, how do they, they saw the future of Argentina investing in the media? And most wrestlers voted in favor of streaming rather than TV show or just doing events or other alternative. They wanted to do streams, they wanted to do to go online and try to make as many people aware of what we are doing down here. Okay. And a, a, a bunch of others who are really optimistic, uh, optimistic and voted in favor of thinking that in 10 years they can live of wrestling. They can pay, pay their taxes, they can pay their food, all just working as a wrestler and, oh, and most of the people in Argentina are really willing to go outside and brush their outside and learn outside and improve. Many of them want to uh, open their horizons and learn more about wrestling in other countries. Mm -hmm. I tell you. And it's a really big pool of talent. 
I really hope those promotions, one thing you mentioned, I hope those promotions start talking to one another, start working together. I've seen it happen here locally with my scene and some other promotions. You take some good guys from this promotion, put them with those guys, you have a successful card. People want to see the rematches. Uh, if anybody from Argentina happens to understand English and can hear me, work together for the greater good because you wouldn't believe the magic that's possible. But hopefully, hey, in 10 years, if you guys can make a living off of it, it anything's possible. I, I, I guarantee you can with the talent you have. And you've got some smart folks down there, yourself included. You guys know what you're doing. You're focused. You're working your asses off. You guys should be damn proud of yourself. What would you like to see happen in 2023? In a perfect world, we got to take baby steps. What's the perfect scenario for Argentina wrestling in 2023? I think 2023 will be a, like a make or break year for Argentina. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of promotions are growing but this growth is an exponential, it's gradual, and it cannot be sustained unless we develop a strong base beneath it. We need to have strong foundations. Yeah. The indie circuit is growing, but it's as any as any indie endeavor is unstable. Yeah. We there, we have seen a lot of uh, a, a lot of companies attempt to start and never start, or a, a lot of projects being just projects in the air. There have been a, like, dozens in Argentina. Most of them because one, they don't try to uh, to do it like they should in this time. They think they they are going to get a TV show, or they think they are they don't need to understand internet or understand social media uh, to be to work at this. But it's not you cannot at this point in time. You need to understand social media to promote a show. You're exactly right. My what I really would want is uh, having all the leaders of different companies sit down and try to hash out a plan to work together. That is a, like the it's a, a dream at this point. But there have been a little bit of uh, crossovers, at least more than the, the, the used to be. Yeah. So I have a little bit of hope of that thing that that thing can, that uh, area can improve. But mostly, I really want all companies to grow, all companies to develop their wrestlers, and all companies to start uh, taking more care of their wrestlers. Like, for example, uh, we are go a lot of companies are starting to finally starting to get a medical. Uh, how do you say this? Insurance, medical insurance for the for the shows. Really, that's a big step to to professionalize the uh, the the shows. And it's a, a really big step. For sure. Uh, but we, what we what we really should work on is not just try to to get everyone together and make one big show. We need to find out how we can combine the best of everyone and make a good product that we can uh, consistently put out and get more audience to everyone. For sure. We need to like let, uh, abandon the ego of making my place the best. And we need to start thinking how to make Argentina the best place. Uh, what uh, what scene are we giving to the new talents? Because we're having a lot of new talent, a lot of young young uh, guys and some young uh, women that are starting to train. And I wonder what work, what is what secret are we letting? Why are we giving them when they start uh, wrestling? Okay. I hope we can get given one where they can go and wrestle in any promotion and we can have group promotional matches and we can try to make everyone uh, increase their audience, increase their talent, their, their skill and make every show better. Yes. I think that I, I'm trying to make that also as little as I can. A reality trying to connect with other promotions and with wrestlers from other promotions to get their opinions and to make their opinions known and to make their promotions known to other different crowds or audiences so more people can go and see wrestling because it's a really nice it's a really nice discipline it's a really nice art mm -hmm. and sport and everyone should go and watch it at least once because it's a really nice experience for sure 
for sure. I tell everybody every show, go support your local independent scene. You're going to be pleasantly surprised, whether you're a wrestling fan or not. Even if you've never watched wrestling in your life, go to an indie show. You're going to be surprised. You're going to come back. You're going to have fun. As far as your scene, if uh, on the outside looking in, yes, egos, one thing, that that's hell to control. Another thing that I can see from the promoter's point of view is who are these people paying to see? Because the, the, the dollar's the driver in anything, the almighty dollar. dollar. Are they coming to see my J-Master? Are they coming to see your Chuck Dixon? Or, you know, whose promotions guys are these people paying to see? So I can understand trying to work that out between each other. But I'll pass this along to you. And if you can pass it along to anybody else, then maybe it'll have some effect. There's a lot of folks just shit-talking when this guy's not even shit-talking, but he's telling this guy he is shit-talking. If they could just talk to each other without the middleman, sometimes these guys are making plays that benefit themselves. If these promoters can meet face-to-face -face and actually talk, they're going to find out, all oh, this guy wasn't so bad after all. There's a lot of that going on. These guys need to talk to each other face-to-face. That's an extremely, extremely good point. Yeah, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen, and once these guys talk face-to-face, -face, they're like, oh, well, you never did say that. Oh, well, yeah, uh, well, you actually are a pretty good promoter, and now things are better than ever. You wouldn't believe the changes. So, And it, that can happen. That can definitely happen. I would love to see the promotions come together so fans down there can get some of the dream matches they've been wanting to see. What would be everybody comes together, you can make a card of dream matches. Give me a few of your dream matches. Okay, I got some dream matches. Yeah. Uh, you can book the show kind of like fun. Kuma Book It. Uh, cool, cool, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of hard because I, I really like a lot of wrestlers from different places. Uh -huh. uh, but, for example, I, I, I would really like to see the, the champion from Superstitia de Lucha, Adriel. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I have seen a lot of his matches, and I could see him having a really nice match with Dixon or with Theo Griffin. Okay. Uh, I would love to see uh, Cele, the, the whole Celeste still have a match against another whole still five or five survivor, uh, survivor, uh, survivor, ah, survivor series uh, rules. Yeah. Like, and okay. elimination. Mm -hmm. uh, I from where. Bobby Cruz, who used to be the champion from Duelo de Legenda, but look his belt, would be really great in a match against Jerry Master, for example. They would complement really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Guido de Oledor, who is like a, the big powerhouse in the region, uh, can literally have a good match with anybody else. You could put anybody from the scene, and Guido could pull a pretty impressive match. Uh, he had if uh, another match you need to check when it comes out in the uh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Guido had a Kaishu match. Okay. Like Kaishu Big Battle, they put Guido and Valentino in the same in a ring with a lot of uh, buildings made out of cardboard. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Hell yeah. They they beat they beat they were living shit out of each other. Guido Guido threw. Uh, through Valentino from the third rope in a pop up power bomb. Okay. Valentino flew half of the ring before landing. Oh shit. <laughs> in a pile of cardboard. It was, uh, it was pure, pure pro wrestling. Pure fun, silly. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a something we should, in, in a something I would work. I would work a match like that because every show needs a really fun, silly match. Yes. Yes, it does. Uh, I recall watching a show. There was a lot of kids there, and the kids, it was a smaller venue. The kids were having a blast, and it reminded me so much of a show we had right here in my hometown where the kids were having a blast. And if you, you guys are doing that for those kids, you're putting smiles on the faces of kids. There's nothing better yeah, on we, this earth. There's nothing better than that right there. We had a, we had a, a fun event and uh, back in, in winter, winter, summer, your summer, like August, mm -hmm. uh, that we went to do a show for the Children's Day. 
in okay. the, down here in Argentina in August. And what really funny it was in a, a with, which <laughs> it was in a in a football field, an open 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 door football field. We made a ring there, and the people were on the uh, in uh, around us in, around the push the wires. It was really fun. The kids were really enjoying the the show. Yeah, good. Like I say, that's that's what it's all about. Above the money or anything. Even inspiring another generation, those kids could be watching you, and they could be the ones that really take off with it, like take it to the moon <laughs> and buy out Vince McMahon. Well, whoever buys him out, they can buy them out. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> you can yeah. inspire some folks. So good. Good on you guys. That's, like I say, good on you guys. I definitely wish you nothing but the best coming up in 2023. Like you say, you got some smart dudes um, have you been watching any uh, American wrestling? You any AEW, WWE? I I watch I watch uh, a little bit AEW uh, from time to time and WWE. Mm -hmm. I watch. Uh, I really enjoy like this week we had the uh, the uh, the ladder match with the the final one of the series of seven mm -hmm. between uh, Triangle and Amor and the lead and that was a really fun match. It's yeah. a kind of uh, Silly, silly over the top sports press. I like. Uh -huh. uh, it was it was pretty fun. Uh, I'm 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 trying also to watch. I, I'm following the the Bristol Map uh, site and trying to watch uh, shows from different parts of the world. Yeah, and I'm really interested to see how different uh, countries interpret the uh, the discipline of wrestling. Yes, and they have a little uh, they have some really good matches in places you couldn't imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I really want to, and I, I try to broaden my horizons and not uh, stay just watching what I used to watch, and it was mostly uh, yeah, American and Japanese wrestling. I'm trying to watch a little bit on more of Mexican wrestling. Uh, I know I will never do the things they can do, but I know I, maybe I, I'm going to have to do to be the race for somebody who wants to do it. So it's good to see it before before something comes and says, I'm going to go to a two rope and do a course crew, plancha, huracarrana. Yeah, I need to know how to take it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. At least know how to take it. I got you. I'm glad you brought up you, you, Russell, Matt, because I've been doing the same as you. I'm trying to find these different styles and different just I love seeing wrestling TV in different countries. And also, uh man, I've been watching some catch out of south africa and africa and south america yeah they, they, they are really weird they, they, the south african and african scenes are really interesting it's very i, I, I was like I re really invested in some of the storylines <laughs> <laughs> it, it is when they start to pull the the the, the, the black magic shit yeah it's, oh god they're going to kill another chicken for this match and i was <laughs> oh yes <laughs> it is pretty fucking awesome <laughs> It, every match I watch, is every match have something to do with black magic and voodoo? Uh, I, I think there is part of the scene that does that, that mixes a little bit of traditions with wrestling, and they do really cool stuff. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I'm glad you're appreciating it as well. Yeah, and uh, yeah, props to Russell Map. Shout out to Russell Map. Still need to get Russell Map yeah. on the show. We'll do that soon. Uh, did you happen to see Osprey and Omega from Wrestle Kingdom? Yeah, <laughs> holy shit! Woo! I saw. Oh, <laughs> that was a fucking, fucking awesome match. Oh, that's Every, a match rest, the whole of Wrestle Kingdom was pretty good. The whole, the whole, the whole card was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. From start, from even the pre-show, I watched the pre-show, the the Rumble and everything, everything. Nothing was bad except for Sasha Banks botched debut, but you'll have that. <laughs> Yeah, what, what? Maybe she won nervous. What can you do? Exactly, exactly. It was, but yeah, I agree with you. And I'm looking forward to the crossover show with Noah coming up. They killed it last year. I'm sure. And Nakamura and uh, Muda. Did you happen to see Nakamura and Muda and Noah? Yeah, I see. I didn't see the whole match. I see highlights, and it was pretty cool. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was a, a good, good, solid match. We're about to. Lose great Muda. I've always been a great fan, but definitely do deserves his rest. It's a crazy time to be a pro wrestling fan. What what are you guys thinking over in Argentina about WWE? What's going to happen? Um, well, we are. I we're not talking a lot about it in the film. Mm -hmm. 
uh, I, I, at least I, in the, the corner of the scene I am, if, if we haven't talked about it, uh, it, it, it doesn't really affect us a lot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're going to watch. Some people are going to watch it. Some people <laughs> maybe I don't do it, won't watch it depending who buys it. Mm. But it's not it's, it's not like it's going to change a lot down here. Exactly, exactly. Because we unless were... uh, un unless like uh, unless Triple H uh, ends up uh, owning or or being still creative that he said he wanted to do that the whole NXT in different regions, maybe that got got us. But uh, apart from that, yeah, I, I don't know what could could do to us uh, do we get involved. Hey. I say let's put a performance center right down there in Argentina. Give me an Argentina NXT. I'll watch it. By goodness, I promise. Hook it up, <laughs> Paul. Hook it up. I appreciate you coming on. We're rolling into the end of the show. Uh, definitely sounds like it's been uh, – you guys are moving forward. It sounds like you had an awesome year, and you got an awesome year hit. Uh, any sh You say you got a big one coming up in March, right? Yeah, we, we don't know exactly what it is, but we are, a lot of people is very, are really excited to see what could it be, and if, if it's really, if it's something real that is, like Chile trying to get people from their side here to uh, to uh, mix it up and get people invested into shows, it could be really cool for the team, it could uh, help everyone to get uh, to a, a new level, trying to get a little bit better. And I hope we, I hope, I hope it's really cool, and I hope every other uh, promotion in Argentina can improve this year. For sure, for sure. Uh, does it seem like there's still a lot of people signing up for training schools and things like that? Do we still got some people coming in and training? Yeah, we have a, a bunch of people in the region. I know Cacho Argentino also has a bunch of new people. They had a lot of debut and debut this year uh, of new wrestlers. Okay. Uh, we have uh, they have, they have uh, in they have for example uh, Vladimir Sukov is one of the new guys in Get Argentino. Okay. Tall guy. Uh, they have a, a female wrestler named Lola, who is pretty pretty cool. She had a, she had a couple of intergender matches back in Catch. Uh, Dolores Leshinas also had new people. Uh, Superstar de la Lucha had a couple of new, a, a bunch of new people. They, they were they were um, showcased in their team, in their YouTube show. Okay. And yeah, overall we are having an increase in people coming to train and trying to be uh, new wrestlers. Good, good, cool. What about sponsors? Do does any of these federations have any businesses throwing any money at them or anything? Not yet, but only time will tell. Okay. Uh, Legion has been growing a lot. Uh, Catch Argentino always has uh, like a uh, uh, certain connection to a uh, football club here in Argentina. Uh, there are some uh, strategic alliances between different uh, promotions, but uh, so far we don't have like a big backer. Right. But soon enough, maybe somebody will, will hit the jackpot and we can see what will happen if one of the promotions here in Argentina gets a proper proper funding and proper resources to right. blossom. Well, I hope folks are coming out to shows to support you guys then. I don't know how much the schools make, if anything. So especially, you know, God bless the folks coming out, paying to see you guys. You know, it sounds like that would be where the majority of any money made. And I know you've said a million times, it shows how much you guys love it because, you know, you're not making bagoodles. Nobody on the independent scene's making bagoodles of money yeah. like for the love of the game. Exactly. Exactly. I do. I, I thank, thank you for having me. For sure. For sure. Anything you want to plug uh, before we let you go? Uh, no. No, yeah, I'm I'm cool. I'm more or less. You can always see me in, on Twitter, uh, uploading any articles I write. And um, Legion is going to start having shows back in now in February. Uh, apart from that, no, I'm I'm not involved in anything more wrestling related. All right, all right. Well, before I let you go, I think I got a good question. We talked about what we wanted to see from the scene in 2023. 
what we'd like to see from Argentina wrestling in 2023, what we want to see from others. What do we want to see from Kuma in 2023? Oh, I have some ideas, but I will be, I, I, I will do some, I will be doing some spoilers if I talk about it. So you have, you have to watch and see if everything works like I plan, it's going to be an, an interesting year. Hell yeah. Good. And I know, I know it'll work out for you. I can't wait to see what happens. I'll be keeping my eyes on you, Kuma. I've been Spooky <laughs> Lou, joined by the great Kuma. Watch some, I'm going to put some links in the description. Check out what's going on in Argentina. Then after you do that, be kind to each other, but don't take no shit. Keep grinding, Kuma. To the crew down there, tell them Spooky Lou loves them. To keep grinding, I respect the hell out of them. To my listeners, I respect the hell out of y'all. Y'all's out of control lately. I love you. Spooky Lou for Kuma. It's been Russell Roney. It's been a great fucking time. Go do something.